Hi, I am Donnie Nell. Um, I'm in the business division at the Abu Dhabi Men's College, and I've been there since 2012. I would like to introduce you to a new course that is being offered. The course is entitled Supply Chain Management. The course code is SLM2003, and I'll just be giving you a brief introduction about what this course entails. Many students have come to me and they've asked me, what is a supply chain or what is supply chain management? Now, any product that you think of needs a supply chain. If you think of the uh, technological appliances we use, if you think of the food we eat, the shoes we wear or the clothes we wear, the cars we are driving, everything that you see as a product needs a supply chain. And a supply chain basically is buyers and sellers buying from each other and then obviously selling this to a customer who will use this product. So it's a link of, of organizations linked together through buying and selling. Some supply chains are short and only have a few companies involved and other supply chains are much more complex. Uh, think of, for example, a retail outlet. A retail outlet is a firm where we walk in as customers and we buy products that we will consume. If you think of a retail outlet like Carrefour or Lulu's, they will have many, many um, suppliers who supply to them, and those suppliers in turn will also have suppliers. So some supply chains can be very complex. When we look at the term of supply chain management, uh, the word management, if you are doing any course um, that touches on management, you will be introduced to the management tasks of planning, organizing, activating, and control. So in essence, supply chain management is all about planning the supply chain very carefully, organizing the supply chain. We must know who will do what activity within the supply chain. Activating means that we will get this supply chain going, we will implement what we've planned, and control, obviously, we, we need to see if we are achieving the objectives of adding value to all the members in the supply chain. So supply chains are managed across what we call three supply chain flows. The, the, the three supply chain flows are information, products and services, and finance or money. So the first one, information. Information is very important for every supply chain. If you think about it, what will a manufacturer, if we use a manufacturer as an example, what will they manufacture to provide to the customers? They need to know what customers want. So customers have needs and wants, and this company identifies these needs and wants through market research. They will use this information to find the right supplier. So this is the information flow. Um, once we get the right information, we will go to the supplier and we will buy the right materials from the suppliers. Suppliers are companies or firms that provide us with what we need to manufacture a product. If we are a manufacturing company, and if we are a retail company, we will buy it from a supplier who can provide us with a finished product ready for, that, for us to sell to the final consumer. So the product flow generally flows from the supplier towards the customer. The third supply chain flow is finances or money. Now money, once the, once the customer buys the product, the customer will pay the retailer, who in turn will pay the distributor, who in turn will pay the manufacturer. So in essence, the finance flow is from the customers going upstream towards the suppliers. Now in some cases, uh, the supply chain flows can go in both directions. For example, information, we do market research, we obtain information from the customer, and we use this information to select the right supplier. But we can also advertise our products or communicate and make sure we understand the needs of the customers correctly. So that will be an example of the information flow going from the supplier to the customer. If products are damaged, the product will come back from the customer to the manufacturer to be reworked. And in some cases, the finance or the money flow can can go towards the customer where companies decide to reimburse or give the money back to the customer. The next issue I want to touch on is the topic of supply chain processes. Now many different books cover the topic of supply chain processes in different manners, but I've decided to use the supply chain operations reference or the SCORE model. This is a very simple and easy method to explain how, to, um, how supply chain processes are used within a supply chain. They have six processes that they look at, but for purposes of this um, presentation, we will look at only five processes. These processes are plan, source, make, deliver, and returns. And as you can see in the diagram there, that each company, except for the final customer or the first supplier, will use all these processes within the company. So each supply chain member needs to, to um, implement these processes within their company. The first supply chain process is plan. As a company, we need to plan 
where we are going, what we want to do. We need a supply chain strategy. In essence, the supply chain strategy can be low cost or differentiation. And all the other strategies are based on these two um, overarching strategies. If we choose a low cost strategy, we are trying to be as cheap as possible, as efficiently as possible. We are trying to save costs. So our quality will not be a bad quality, but it will be an acceptable quality. If our strategy is differentiation, very simply stated, differentiation means that we are trying to be different than our competition. We can be different by means of high quality. We can be different by means of a quick response or being agile, flexible to what customers want. Um, think of different companies. Think of, for example, the, the vehicle you are driving. Why are you driving that vehicle? Was it to save money? Was it, to, was it because the vehicle is, uh, has got a very good fuel economy? Or are you driving that vehicle because of some luxury um, features within that product? And this is the competitor advantage that this company was looking for. You cannot, for example, have a high quality strategy or a strategy based on, dif on differentiation, based on quality, and try and buy the cheapest raw materials from suppliers. This will not be aligned, and your customers will, 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 will uh, find out the mistake here. We will also look at things like global supply chain management. We will look, you will plan what happens, how will we plan, plan the different risks that might come across the supply chain. We will have to plan which transportation modes we will use to get the products to the customers. We need to plan our inventory levels, and we will have key performance indicators to measure or to control the performance across this supply chain. The second supply chain process I want to look at is sourcing. Sourcing is all about um, selecting the right suppliers from which we will buy raw materials and the materials that we need. We've got to make decisions concerning will we use one supplier, will we use many suppliers, will we use local suppliers, or will we use global suppliers. There are advantages and disadvantages to both, and this decision will be made based on the trade-offs that the company will make. We need to know how, many, how much money we will be spending on buying this product. This is a very important decision. And we need to know who are all the possible suppliers who will be able to supply this product. Some relationships between companies and their suppliers are very, very strategic. If you think of an aeroplane manufacturer and you think of the manufacturer of the engine of this plane, this is a strategic alliance. These companies need each other. If one fails, the other one has got a very high likelihood of also failing. So these companies will share information, they will share benefits, and they will share risks, and they will share in everything to make this a win-win strategic relationship. In other instances, your relationship with your supplier will not be that important. If you are thinking of buying stationery or, for example, cleaning materials, you will just want a low-cost uh, supplier who can provide you with the necessary raw materials and equipment that you need. In this case, we talk about a transactional or an adversarial relationship between buyer and supplier. The third supply chain process is the make, the make process. This is where we are physically looking at manufacturing or producing the product. In the course of supply chain management, we will be covering the, uh, the issues of location and specifically capacity in this, in this section of, of the supply chain processes. Because all products will be made within a factory or a plant, if we are looking at a manufacturing company, as an example. So location is very, very important. If you think of, a, for example, a retail outlet, the location of the retail outlet must be close to customers. If customers cannot reach the retail outlet very easily, the, the the company has a disadvantage. Uh, capacity, very simply stated, capacity just means how big must our factory be? How big must our plant be? How many machines will we use? Which machines will we use? Or equipment will we use? And wh how many, what is the output of these machines per, for example, hour? These are very important uh, decisions that need to be made as part of the make process. The fourth process is deliver. So once the product has been made, was ready in the retail outlet, we need to deliver the product to the customers. The manufacturing company will make the product, but needs to be transported by means of transportation, for example, to the different customers or distribution centers. Companies will have to make a decision whether they will need to use a distribution facility. If you come from Abu Dhabi, you might be familiar with the Lulu's Logistics um, distribution facility close to the Dalma Mall in Musafa a massive distribution facility that services, services the entire UAE. So transportation, different modes have different advantages. If we need something urgently and fast and it's a long distance, we will use plane as an example. But plane is more expensive than, for example, ships and trains or rail, the rail networks. Um, 
So the advantage of the water and the, and the rail networks are, for example, they've got much higher capacity, meaning that they can carry much higher volumes. But, and the costs will be much lower per unit because we are transporting such huge quantities. But, but obviously the time issue comes, uh, comes in here where it'll take much longer for a company to deliver via uh, ship or train. Road networks have got the big advantage of, the, of that they are very accessible and very flexible. Um, roads link any company to any company. They can basically pick up a product at a company's uh, front door. So usually companies will use a combination of these uh, modes of transportation. The last process I want to look at is returns. No company plans to make a or manufacture a product that will fail. But in some cases, some mistakes do creep in. If you think of the Samsung issue with the mobile phones, where the phone was exploding when uh, people were charging it. So this is a massive issue. Obviously, Samsung did not plan to make this product. But if it does happen, firms must be ready to be able to manage what we call the reverse logistics process. Reverse logistics is just where the product is returned from the customer back upstream up the supply chain to, for example, the manufacturer. I want to use a very simplistic example to just illustrate these, illustrate these processes briefly. I want to look at a barbecue with friends. Plan, the first process. We need to plan when will we do this barbecue. Where will we do this barbecue? Will it be in the desert? Will it be at somebody's marshalus? Will it be at somebody's villa? What will we do? And who will we invite, for example? These are issues concerning the planning process. Source, we might be familiar with a very good butcher. Uh, and we know we've got a very good relationship with this butcher and we buy our meat there every time, so we go there again. So we might suggest a new butcher. Then we might decide to go and see what the quality of this new butcher's meat is like. So we need to source the meat and the side dishes and the charcoal, for example, and the fire lighters as, an, as examples. Make Somebody will be designed or assigned to prepare the meat, to grill the meat on the, the grill. This person might even go to the different friends and say, how do you want your meat done? Do you want it well done or medium? In this case, we're even talking about customizing the product to what customers want. Another, the fourth process is deliver. So once the meat is ready, we will deliver the meat to the friends as they've ordered it, and we will enjoy each other's company and fellowship. And then obviously the last process is returns. Returns, there might be some leftovers or too much meat has been prepared, and we put it in dishes and we give it to our friends to take home as a breakfast snack maybe tomorrow. I hope this example just illustrates some um, a different application of the supply chain processes to a more practical example. Now I'd just like to show you briefly where this course fits into your major, should you choose logistics and supply chain as your major. Uh, the course is highlighted in yellow, and orange are the courses that you will take when you do the major in logistics and supply chain management. And you will be introduced to this course in semester three. So it's a very introductory course. And we just basically introduce you to these concepts I've just discussed using the SCORE model. I'm not going to say too much about career opportunities right now because I believe there will be a separate opportunity to do this. But if you look at the different components of the SCORE model, plan, source, make, deliver, and returns. Each of these components have got several job titles that you can use or that you can apply for. You can become a supply chain director. You can become a sourcing manager or a procurement manager. You can become a operations manager or a production manager. You can become a transportation or a logistics manager. These are just some examples of the positions that you can apply for if you have a supply chain qualification. Just in closing, I'd just like to look at two more things, logistics and supply chain trends in the UAE or with what's happening in the UAE. The UAE has got a very strategic location in terms of the global business environment. It links Europe with Africa, it links Europe with India and the Far East, and it also links the Far East and India even with Africa. I read somewhere that 70% of the world's population can be reached within an eight-hour flight from Dubai. That is very significant from a business perspective. The airline industries are amazing. They get very high ratings. If you look at the ports, Dubai Airport is now the biggest airport in the world. And you look at other ports, the seaports, Jebel Ali, Khalifa Port, the ports in Fujairah and Abu Dhabi. Massive ports. Etihad Rail is an extremely interesting and massive rail project that is being launched in the UAE. This project is um, 
uh, took off in 2012 and is designed eventually to link Fujairah through Jebel Ali in Dubai through Musafa to Jeddah. This means that companies will, instead of using a ship to go across or, be, or, or, or below Oman and Yemen, they will go straight from, from UAE, straight across the desert to Jeddah. So companies will save 10 to 14 days in lead time. This is significant if you think about the cost of carrying inventory, the cost of having inventory in your supply chain. Now, the challenge of, uh, challenges of developing a rail network across the UAE in, and in desert conditions is immense. And it is a very interesting development in the UAE that you really must follow. There are several logistics hubs. Just briefly, if you drive from Abu Dhabi to Dubai, you drive through about 20 to 30 minutes when you come to Jebel Ali. 20 to 30 minutes, you will see all kinds of logistics companies in this area. So massive logistics hubs in the region. When we look at modern trends, I'd just like to say something quickly about some modern trends in logistics and supply chain. This is from a global perspective. Driverless cars, where drivers will not be in the cars. Now, unfortunately, in some of these uh, experiments, there have been some fatalities lately. And so this is not ready for use right now. But in future, um, there will be cars with no drivers in them. Drone deliveries. I heard on the radio that drones will be used to deliver emergency and necessary products to areas where it is very difficult to access. For example, if the traffic is highly congested or if there are geographical barriers in the form of mountains and so on. So drones will be used to deliver this. 3D printing. 3D printing. When you've got a customer in Abu Dhabi, you will place an order with a company in Dubai who has a 3D printer. The truck will leave Dubai starting to print this product and the product will be ready for the customer when the truck reaches the customer in Abu Dhabi. Amazing new trends and developments. The Internet of Things, and where different devices are talking with each other. This is an amazing, also in the sense that, um, for example, if you've got a refrigerator, your refrigerator will talk to your mobile phone, and your mobile phone will show you that you need to buy milk because your milk supply is low. So this was just a very brief introduction to the topic of supply chain management. I hope you've got a better idea of what this entails. I hope you enjoyed the presentation as much as I enjoyed presenting it. And may God bless you in your choice as you make your decision concerning your, your major.